Welcome to Drone Link. Now we're going to pick a plan and create a Drone Link user profile. Let's get started by going to the Drone Link homepage and then clicking on Pricing. Drone Link recommends buying here instead of in an app store because it provides benefits including pricing in local currencies, discounts for annual plans, the ability to upgrade, and you can manage your billing information. You'll be presented with options showing you professional and hobbyist plans. Professional plans are for commercial use or if you need advanced features such as access to enterprise drone models, terrain follow, or you need multi-user accounts. Hobbyist is for recreational use, education, and non-profits. If you need help deciding, you can click on this button here and you'll be asked some simple questions that will then present you with options based on your inputs. We're going to select professional because we will be using this commercially. Once you select professional, you'll be presented with three options, starter, growth, and enterprise. At the top is a toggle that allows you to switch between monthly and annual plans and switching between them will show you the price difference between the two. Once you've decided on a plan, you can purchase that plan by clicking on one of the buttons shown here and we'll cover that more later. We're going to be looking at starter and growth for our needs here. You'll be shown a summary of the options but if you click on compare plans you'll get full details of what's included in each plan. This includes information about which drones are included and which features are included. In our case, we only need one user and we don't need access to the enterprise drones, so we're going to select Starter. Click on the back button to jump to the previous screen and then click on Choose Starter to select the plan based on the monthly or annual rate selected. Once you select a plan, you'll be asked to create a profile. And once you click register, you'll be asked to provide payment information. And then click subscribe. You'll receive a message saying welcome to DroneLink. And you'll also receive an email with a link you should click to verify your email address. Make sure to do that to verify your account. If you click on the button marked customize from the welcome screen, You'll be given options to change your logo, manage your billing, change the account name, the contact email, and so on. If you don't want to do that now, you can always come back to this screen by clicking the three dots next to the account name once you're logged in. Click on Manage Billing, and you'll be taken to a new page. This contains information about your current plan, your payment methods, any billing information, and a list of transactions to date. Click next to a transaction and you'll be taken to a page that contains information about that particular transaction and an option to download an invoice or download a receipt. Once you click out of the customized screen, you'll be taken to a page that contains links to tutorials, the leaderboard, methods for connecting with other users, and also the ability to create missions. You can create missions by clicking on the create button and then selecting from one of a number of different templates, and we'll cover that in future videos. We also need to log into the mobile app, and once logged in, we'll be given the option to customize our account. Once past that, we'll be presented with a similar menu to learn more, create new missions in the mission planner, or open the on-the-fly missions. Once you have created some missions, this screen will disappear and be replaced with a list of the missions that you have. As with the online system, you can click the Create button and be presented with a list of templates that you can pick for planning missions. In addition, you have access to the on-the-fly functions. These are missions that are created by following step-by-step -step instructions when the drone is in the air. Click on the hamburger menu in the top left to access other features, such as the system language, whether you are using metric or imperial measurements, the type of dashboard you prefer, and the orientation of your app. And finally, we have access to the History tab, which at this point doesn't have anything in it since we haven't flown any missions. Next, we will fly some missions using the different flight control workflows, including mission planning a map, a waypoint mission, and creating an on-the-fly mission using the drone. 